Yep. So we've moved things around a little bit. I've come over to the, to the blade with my hammer, which I can use to excite the blade. I'm going to excite the blade at the back of this point here, number 15, and that allows us to get a driving point FRF. That's typically way, the way we do it. We assume that this is stiff in section, which it's clearly not. You know, it's a flexible blade, but we, we can't strike it from the front because then we'll be in the way of the vibrometer, so we have to you know, strike it from, from the rear and um, collect the measurements from, from the front over there. We can see those measurement points we have still defined uh, on the image. And I'm going to choose to just start this measuring continuous. What I've done in the meantime is I've turned off the triggering. Uh, we're just basically free running because initially I want to be able to see the impacts coming through. So the analyzer 2 window that we can see here in the middle of those three cascades, those are the impacts that are happening when I strike with the hammer on anything. But that's, that's signaling. I'm, I'm going to be triggering off this in the long run. You can actually um, yeah, see those impacts coming through and they're all different sizes, different durations a little bit. When I stop, they stop and they go. With the hammer, uh, with the blade, if I can tap it, um, and I can use this auto scale button over here, if I tap the blade just with my hand, you can see the vibrometer measuring the response of the blade. And we've got 3.2 seconds duration as we set up in the A to D settings. And we're just free running, right? So we're not triggering. Why I did this was because I wanted to set what the trigger levels look like. So I want to do a few impacts. Um, they, I can see that there's about 0.5 newtons when I strike the structure. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 0.5 newtons would be a good trigger level. Please press the escape button. Sometimes Windows wants to do an update. We don't want Windows doing any updates on this one. Um, so if I go back to the A to D settings into my trigger, actually I need to stop. Have I crashed it? Okay, it's eventually stopped the acquisition. It allows me to go back in onto the reference. Um, I'll increase that level uh, to about 5% which is where I thought I was, but it wasn't triggering properly when I started before. So now you can see down the bottom it's waiting for trigger here, okay, because like, there's nothing happening. So if I strike the hammer, which I did, it's making one measurement, and then it stops and it's now waiting for trigger again. Hit with the hammer, I'm actually just hitting the top of the structure, I get lots of force, and it's waiting for trigger again. If I then strike the blade, again you can see now, that's what I'm actually looking for. Essentially, almost ideal is um, a sharp impact. We've got 5% pre-trigger. We record before the impact, the start of the impact event occurs, and then we see this um, response from the point that we're focused on on the blade. And each of the different points on the blade will give us a different response. So, if I move the point that I'm pointing with the laser beam around manually. Um, and restrike, you'll see we get a slightly different looking response and that's a function of where I am on the blade and which mode shapes contribute to the response of that point on the blade by a, to, a, to a larger or a lesser extent. You can see that this waveform looks slightly different. It's different because I hit the blade differently as well and I can never hit the blade exactly the same way each time. I can get close to that if I use, instead of a manual impact hammer, one of our automatic impact hammers, where we can control the velocity, we fix the position, and the stepper motor drives the hammer into the structure time after time after time, very, very precisely at the same level. As, an, as, a, as a manual hammer, hammer user, you know, each time I strike, I strike at a different, slightly different level of energy, but the point of modal analysis is that we divide the response by the input and the transfer function is a constant. So if I hit it harder, I get more response. If I hit it less hard, I get less response. The transfer function, i.e. the blade dynamics, remain a constant. And so if everything's linear, you know, more excitation, more response, less excitation, less response. So I can use manual hammers quite effectively to do experimental modal analysis. 
Okay, if we go back to the software on the screen, I will show on this lower window here by um, choosing FFT and vibration and reference, we'll have a look at the FRF. So the FRF is going to be velocity over force. Um, I will actually make this full screen for the moment so we can see that quite nicely. So now it's waiting for the trigger again. One excitation. When it finishes acquiring, it's producing me a frequency response function. It looks a bit noisy. I can auto scale it. Um, you can see that I don't get much excitation above here. I get a lot of magnitude up here, a lot of noise. I said before I should look at that on a log scale as well. So we'll have a look at dB and response. And remember, I have a kilohertz of excitation, but I don't a kilohertz of frequency window. But I actually don't have any excitation. What I'm interested in is these peaks down here, actually. Let me minimise that window again and go back to these windows. So on these windows I should have a look at, in terms of also the FFT on these windows. So if we look at these FFT windows, here now you can see very nicely on the force ex excitation window the characteristic bandwidth or spectrum for an impulsive excitation. To excite the structure over a wide frequency range like this, I really want to excite over that the full frequency range. But the duration of the excitation, and this is a relatively soft tip, gives me leads to this kind of um, somewhat shorter excitation frequency range. Really, it's useful from around about what from zero hertz here up to about probably a hundred hertz, where I've got one dB. In fact, no, I can get a bit more out of it. Probably I can get up to about 100, 150 hertz. So one decade from the peak is the useful width, and this is about 2.3. So about 1.3 out here, that would be my useful excitation, sort of around about to here. And in the FRF, which is still showing down here, you, know, you can kind of see like the rest of it above there is not very interesting, um, 130 hertz or something. This is the bit that I'm interested in here. So I can probably actually change the range properties over here and I can zoom in. I need a keyboard for that. Or you can maybe just hit delete for me, yes sir. And then enter. Now you can see over this frequency range, it's one measurement, remember, and the resolution's quite coarse. So it still looks a bit noisy. I haven't done any averaging, but there are definitely two peaks here and here, and there are definitely two phase wraps through, remember, through pi radians when I get a resonance. You can see those phase transitions really clearly there. Of course, there's still a bit of noise, and this is a phase wrap where it goes through to minus pi up to plus pi, and that's just normal with, with experimental work. And there's another phase wrap over here, out here. So we ignore the phase wraps because phase can't take a value of any less than minus pi to plus pi, but it, so it wraps through 2 pi at this point. Um, if I change the tip stiffness, please can you pass me an, a harder tip, a nylon tip? Thank you. Uh, we've got actually an aluminium tip there uh, instead. This is much stiffer, so we'll see a different res looking response here if I um, strike the blade of this one. It's triggered, and there you can see how much wider, right? So there's quite a lot of DC on that, but much wider, flatter response, and the energy is shared out along here, okay? It's actually rescaled as well because I've got auto scale selected. Um, and that's the difference. Now you can see, look how smooth this one is. Uh, this is probably actually average. Oh no, averaging is off. So this is a lot smoother, a lot less noisy. I've got excitation all the way up here. And if I, I could rechain, I could, I could reset this to an auto scale. I could reset this to a kilohertz and we probably see smooth FRF. But you can definitely see some nice resonances in there and in the response spectrum for the for the vibrometer again lots of nice peaks in there um, lots lots of different frequencies and that's what I expect for a structure like this so I'll probably go with a stiffer tip even though I'm maybe only interested in the first few measurements and let's stop